I'm gesticulating a lot. You shut up. You be quiet. Okay, do I really think self-improvement is a waste of time? Yes and no. No one in their right mind thinks that improvement is detrimental for you. Everyone wants to improve or be better at whatever chosen skill or field that you pursue. To have self-improvement as the core focus of your life, that is a waste of time. And I'm not saying this to berate anyone, because I was in that situation myself. And I think lots of people fall into that hole, especially if you are really ambitious but you might not naturally fall into that type A personality. Let's just say you're like me. Really ambitious, you get super excited about plans and you have an idea of your potential but you get really burnt out in the plan. Get burnt out in the planning stage. You're someone that's looking for guidance in order to maximize your time so that you can go ahead and pursue your dreams, your skills, I think that's when people fall into the trap of being obsessed with self-improvement. And I was like this, and sometimes I still am. I highly doubt there's many people that want to regress, unless they're doing it for attention and then you just look dumb. I'll get to the end of a day where I didn't really achieve much at all, mindlessly browsing on my phone or daydreaming or something dumb. So I panic at the end of the night and I don't want to go to sleep because I don't want to let go of the day because I know I failed. And I know we're not put on earth to produce and our worth isn't defined by our work but also you can't spend every day doing nothing. You're not going to feel good about yourself. I think it all stems from this feeling of connecting our worth to our work. I do think there's a connection but at the same time we shouldn't, you know, that's not our... <laughs> I'm distracted by you being here. Um. Oh yeah, I get to the point where this whole hustle culture kind of got so in- Alan, stop! It got so embedded in me that at the end of the day, if I didn't do as much as I wanted or should have done, I felt like I didn't deserve sleep. Which is bad because sleep is way more important than anything else. Did you know? I'm sure people have never told you that before. You're sacrificing sleep because you don't feel like you deserve it because you need to work in order to improve yourself. Yeah, anyway, that's why- that's one portion of why I think toxic self-improvement culture is um, a waste of time. If you're someone that's normal and you take self-improvement principles like getting a routine, working hard, blah blah blah, balancing life, good for you. Good job. Unfortunately, lots of people, like me, aren't very balanced. So we either go to extremes of being lazy and unorganized and shit, or way overdone. Workaholic, stressed, no room for spontaneity, all that. And another thing which pisses me off about self-improvement. People do it, but what are you improving for? Oh my god, my pet peeve. So when you go on YouTube, it might be something completely unrelated. And then you look in the comments and there's some quote from Heraclitus or whatever. Be sure to make the bed in the morning so that you can run your army. I need a studio. I mean... I think it's in focus. It's very strange to me that self-improvement is such a phenomenon, especially on the internet. It is really important to take agency and responsibility for your own life, your own flaws, and to do what you can to correct them and improve yourself. However, who's to say that the best form of self-improvement is through agonizing over and over all the little micro details of your life? Maybe for some people it really helps to set up routines, schedules, timers, rules and all that. But for me, I'm a little bit more of a sporadic person, whether I like it or not. Having structure is really important, especially for someone that's disobedient. I mean, I am, but for someone undisciplined like me, it is good to have some structure. That is such a minute thing, you don't have to center your whole personality around it. People around me, they hate it when I talk about productivity. I guess I'm a wannabe workaholic. 
It makes me wonder why some people like me, who are naturally more disorganized, we know we've got the potential to be higher, but the things getting in our way, typical things lack a structure, lack a discipline. So we reach out to self-help books, to podcasts, to public speakers, to successful individuals, CEOs, business people, all that. All we want is to have a grasp on some semblance of <laughs> structure so that we can actually get things done because I am sick of knowing inside that I have the potential to reach the most ambitious peaks but I'm so many things get in the way we probably do need a little smidge of self-improvement in our lives so that we don't stagnate if we don't implement some kind of self-improvement tactics in our lives we will start to regress. So that's where the title is a slight lie because of course you've got to keep going upwards. We've got the perspective that our life trajectory is always upwards. Always. Even when you're 80 you'll be learning 20 new languages and who knows what philosophy is right. Maybe you work hard, you reach a point and you settle at that plateau or even worse than declining, because at least declining is interesting. Just staying the same forever is eye-wateringly boring. We want to surprise ourselves with how amazing we can be. So naturally we turn to self-improvement. But maybe that's not the right way to go. And I found this out when I was a bit younger, 15 to 17. I was engrossed by self-improvement and self-help books. Every moment of spare time I had, I was trying to figure out how I could maximize it. But then all I was doing was reading quotes and feeling inspired and then doing nothing with it. Now maybe other people are normal and when they do get inspired they go and do something. But for me, I just use this as procrastination, of course. So don't be one of those people that comments something inspirational or motivational. Because we all know what you're up to. You're just disguising your procrastination or lack of action with all these action-filled words and quotes. and it's it's lame. It's true though. If self-improvement doesn't always work for everyone, then what is the solution? I'm sure self-improvement books have existed for a long time. I mean, I was listening to the audiobook Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Pretty sure that was written in the 1920s. So, of course, people have always been driven towards a goal. I highly doubt that people were consuming dozens of books of tips on how to be productive, tips from CEOs and business people and all that. I have a hunch that people took the skill and the craft that they wanted to improve in and they just worked at it. Because I think that self-improvement comes through action and not theory. Uh. <laughs> Self-improvement comes through action and not theory. It doesn't come from micro-analyzing anything. Oops. Sorry. It comes from action, not theory. Focusing on the task that you want, on your goals, and just going for it. I'd say that the search for self-improvement and focusing solely on that is comparable to searching for happiness. Happiness is a byproduct of things that you do, things that you don't do. And I think the same applies to self-improvement. I actually made a video on searching for happiness on my Ko-fi. If you're a producer, you can access that video on Ko-fi.com for as little as $3 a month. Or you can just pop in whatever recurring monthly donation that you want. We'll be very thankful for you. Won't we? Well, I will be. You can hear that. Ah. Just go for it. No excuses.